What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the USS Voyager tutorial season one episode five. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. And if you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button helping me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you guys enough for that. Um, today we're going to be picking up our work uh, where we left off, but we're going to be shifting gears and we're going to be starting the outline for the backbone of the... Uh, backbone of the neck and then we're also going to be making an adjustment to the template of the front of the lower hull. We've got about a 17 minute episode today so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. Now um, the backbone um, I think for the most part more or less here we're going to be using the template that we're going to be putting out right now. But you're going to notice I'm only going to go so far and then I'm going to stop. Now the reason I'm going to be doing this is because I kind of want to let it marinate to see if the template that I'm throwing down is going to be something that I'm going to want to see. So what I'm doing is I'm going off of my gray cut line and then I'm going in a template a rows of four and then I'm going down with a cut and progressing down with a pattern of four for every row. Because the thing with the backbone for Voyager, the backbone almost goes down to the tail end of the ship. So it needs to stretch out quite a bit, actually. Um, so we want to like kind of test out to see if a four by f if a four long going with a cut will be stretched out enough. But then again, we might have to bring it out to five. But for right now, let's go ahead and we're going to do going, four going with a cut. And now I'm going to clean up this gray line here. I'm going to take that off because it's going against the cut line. That's not looking too bad. I want to add on a couple of more rows here so that this way when we zoom out and take a look at it, we can get a better idea if this is going to be something that's going to work. Now, one of the other things that we're going to have to take into consideration before we can truly... Uh, figure out if this is going to work, we have to get our outline established for our lower hull, the top down view. Now you're probably asking like, oh, well, you already have this, but this is just a mock template to get us where we need to go. Um, we're going to have to be lowering this line down to have it flush with the middle of our circle, but you don't want to do that now because we're going to be making adjustments to the circle in just a little bit here. Yeah, see, so potentially, I mean, that could work, but I think we might have to stretch out the backbone here to five. Otherwise, that's not going to do what we need it to do. I had to fast forward there. I apologize. I'm usually very good with the editing, uh, removing any pauses, but for whatever reason, I just completely missed it in today's episode. So I think there's two parts here that I actually have to fast forward where I pause it. So now we're going to come in. We're going with our cut, continuing on our pattern of four. We're only going to do this for a couple of rows, but if you're looking at your 3D model of Voyager, you're going to notice that the neck kind of comes up. It goes into the area where the layer, uh, I guess you call it the layer shelf, where the uh, bridge sits on. It comes in into it a little bit, so that's why I'm having it go forward a little bit, because I'm trying to anticipate um, how that's going to look. Now, it doesn't look bad, but this line right here is what's messing us up because you have to think, this circle, we're going to be moving this up a little bit, so the, and we're going to have to do that before we can rebuild this outline, having it connected to the uh, circle. But once we do have this moved up, then we can actually start working on that and get a better idea of how this transition point is actually going to look. But so far, it doesn't look bad at all. Unfortunately, usually I'd be skipping past doing our circle, but today's episode we're not going to skip past it because I make a couple of tweaks to the circle template that we have. And I, go, I don't go off of any standard template, I just make an adjustment to it. So when we do uh, make that adjustment in just a moment here, you're going to want to build exactly what I build. We're not looking too bad, so alright. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I start off here, but, and I'm just doing this to establish where my center used to be for my circle and trying to figure out how much of it I want to move forward. 
um, and how much of it I want to move upward. But what I ultimately realized here is that I'm doing this in the wrong way. I should be doing this. However, what I need to do is I need to do that from the bottom and build a line out from the bottom row and figure out how many rows I need to go upward. Doing it from the middle at this point, it's really not doing us any favors here. And I'm kind of deciding, uh, trying to determine where my new center is going to be. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how many blocks you need to count upward. But I'm pretty sure that new X uh, line there, that's not going to be the center, if I'm not mistaken. So that is seven blocks up. So now what we need to do, if that's what we're going to do and have that going seven blocks up, then we need to go down to the very bottom of our circle and more or less repeat that same process. Because remember, we want it to come forward one block. So I'm going to bring that back so this way we can count this together. So we have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're going to add an eighth. So we're going eight, we're going out one and eight up. And that's where we're going to start, have our starting point to make an adjustment to our circle because we want it to come. I want the circle to come and hug a little bit closely, uh, closer to the saucer. Now, right now, I'm more or less just copying the template that I have below, but still want to make sure that you're copying what I have because I think when we get to the sides of the circle is where I start to make my change. So I'm going to let this play out so I have a brief window to talk about some other stuff that's coming up with the channel I'm very excited about. Um, I've got shorts that uh, Valkyrie has been helping me to put up on the channel, which has been fantastic. This will be just another way to get people uh, to check out my YouTube channel. And then, of course, we've got uh, the poten uh, potential for Voyager Season 2. So if you're enjoying this tutorial se uh, series and if you loved the tour that I did of Voyager Season 1 and you want to see a second season that showcases the uh, interior and fleshing that out and making a couple last minute adjustments to the exterior, you guys need to let me know in the comments section. If I don't have a lot of people asking me for it, um, I'm not going to do an interior for Voyager if I don't get a lot of people asking. So you need to make sure if that's something that you want to see, let me know in the comments section. We've also got the Enterprise D Season 2 that will be coming up. But bear in mind, I'm only working on the Enterprise D in my spare time when I'm not working on my main build. And now that I've finished Voyager Season 1, I've already transitioned over to what the next build is going to be after Voyager, which is the Excelsior 2 class tutorial. And I'm very excited about getting into that. Um, I've got the wireframe done for the saucer, the neck, and I'm beginning the lower hull. Uh, so that's uh, moving on quite a bit. And then going forward, even after the Excelsior, we'll be doing the Dunderstat class. So both the Excelsior 2 and Dunderstat were both new ships that were featured in the new uh, second and third season of Picard, if I'm not mistaken. I know for sure they were in the second. I don't remember 100% if they were in the third or not. So if they weren't, don't hold it against me. But I'm pretty sure that they were. But uh, yeah, just trying to do brand new ships that people haven't had a chance to do. Um, and also challenge myself a little bit. Voyager in itself was a challenging build. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things that you got to go through a trial and error process sometimes to get where you need to land. Now, I want to briefly get back in what I got going on here. You can see that 
my new x-axis point was actually up by one. The reason for that is when we started our new row down here, we went one block higher than when I counted that out in the middle. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up on the YouTube. And uh, once we get uh, closer to 1,000 subscribers, I'll be uh, beginning my work on the USS Enterprise A Star Trek Beyond 1.1 refit, which will be a refit from the um, Enterprise A retrofit. I'm really looking forward to that build, and if you want to get an idea of what that looks like, I've got two videos up on my YouTube, and I also have a tab under my Discord, USS Enterprise A 1.1, with the concept art and also the 3D model that you can check out. I had a ton of people asking me to do a tutorial on the um, Enterprise A retrofit that I did, and this will be, I think, in my opinion, an even ber a better version than how that one came out, because at this point, it's been several years since I actually worked on that ship. Um, it's kind of crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. I finished that ship, I think, in 2014 or 2015, so it was uh, quite a few years ago at this point. Um, but with all that being said, if there's any uh, builds that you want to see me do, it doesn't have to be Star Trek related. It could be anything in general, as long as I think that it falls in within that um, uh, pop culture uh, nerd uh, category. I'm... I'm open to it. But bear in mind that I don't take personal requests. Um, I base my builds off of two things. My top votes of what people want as well as ships that I'm passionate about. So anybody that messages me, asks me if I do these things for money or anything like that, not interested in doing all that. Um, I go off the top upvote and ships that I can get passionate about. Now you can see I'm making a slight adjustment here to our ring. So this is where you want to do the same thing that I'm doing here. And now we're changing, we're adding a pattern of two, and we're going to end up going up a little bit higher. So we're going to have to adjust our x-axis point once again. I got a little bit ahead of myself there, which is probably why you want to avoid making that mistake and holding off on adding your x-axis point. I probably should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. But... Um, Sometimes you just can't help it. You get excited because the thing's starting to turn out the way that you think it's going to turn out. And then you get it all down. You realize, like, okay, this isn't going to work. i got to make an adjustment and delete a whole bunch of stuff that I just added. <laughs> it happens, you know, especially when you're building a new a ship that you've never, ever built before. Voyager wasn't super challenging, but there was adjustments that you kind of got to make here and there. Um... But, you know, don't worry, I got you guys, we will get there. That's why I wanted to make a point, and I'm going to be do doing this going forward with all of my tutorials that I do. I'm going to have a tour that comes out first before the season. This way you guys can see exactly what you're going to be getting yourselves into to help decide if that's something that you guys want to do. All right, so we finished the bottom half for our template for our circle. Now it's just literally... A process of copying what we have directly below us but mirroring it going upwards once we've completed that pattern we're going to go back and we're going to delete our old inner ring and then we'll have our circle adjusted to the height that we want it at now and then we'll be able to come back again for one last pass for the outline to make the final adjustment to where we want it now i'm just going to forewarn you guys ahead of time and it shouldn't be forewarning is what the final uh, alteration that we make. Uh, we won't be adjusting the placement of our circle. We're just going to be kind of adjusting the sides and then cutting off the top. Because as you can see right here with my circle, it's impeding into the upper section of the ship. I'm doing this on purpose because I'm trying to visualize the placement exactly of where the uh, lower hull needs to sit. Because one thing that you're going to notice if you look at Voyager it does look like, you know, you, if you have somewhat of a circle or oval, ovally circle shape, looking at it from a front view, it impedes into the saucer. So that's why I'm building it in this manner, because I'm trying to visualize and see, as far as the placement goes, if that's going to work. Because I'll zoom out and I'll look at the ship from a front view and see if my placement is where I want it. So that's why I made the decision that, okay, I need to move my circle up a couple of rows because it's too far down. It's not hugging the saucer enough as it should be. 
I wish that there was an easier way to describe it, but that's the best way that I can. Sometimes you just have to eye the build and look at what you have and compare that to the reference material to help guide you to see if you need to make any other adjustments to it. This is why I say having that uh, the reference material is so important to the build because you're using that reference material to help guide you with the changes that you need to make. And preferably having that 3D model or a physical model is the best thing that you can have. Pictures help, but they can be misleading because you don't have that 3D view to look at. All right, so now we're going back and we're reestablishing our X access point. And now we're going to come back here and we're going to start and we're going to get rid of the access that we don't need. This line I am going to keep. This back line, though, we can get rid of this. And also, our old oval, or old circle, we don't need it anymore. We've already used it for the purpose that we needed, for getting our initial outline for our lower hull to see what changes we needed to make. And just kind of figured that we needed to make a slight adjustment to the template for it, as well as the placement. And now that we have that established, we do not need this anymore, so we can just get rid of it. It's one of the reasons I decided to keep this in the tutorial because I want you guys to see realistically what it can take sometimes to make a build like this happen. I think sometimes people can be kind of jaded when they see a tutorial see, uh, series and they see somebody building something for the first time. Maybe it comes out really, really well. Maybe, and hell, you know, maybe there weren't any mistakes that they made or any changes that they needed to make while they were going. But I think that it's important to show the, uh, this stuff because it shows you the problem solving that I go through in order to fix it, which is imperative for those of you that are wanting to learn how to do this stuff on your own without needing a tutorial series. Because my whole goal with why I have my YouTube channel up is that I truly want to show people how they can build these ships themselves. Because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to hoard any type of information. I've come across plenty of people in the past that do not want to show you how to do things. Not necessarily in Minecraft and other games. But when I first started playing Minecraft, you simply could not find tutorials on how to build these ships. And there are too few and far between people that actually build these ships out from scratch. What you'll see is people that they'll go on and they'll use a program to have a computer 3D render out the ship for them. And you look at it and it's like, wow, that build looks absolutely fantastic. But at the end of the day, all they really did was go in there and decorate the ship. They didn't actually design it. And I think the reason that you see a lot of that is because it's easier to do that than try to flesh these things out yourself. It can be a very, very tedious trial and error period, but I think it's, it'll be nothing but a good thing. I've seen a lot of people on my channel growing with their uh, building skills and being able to improve and get better. So I'm doing something right. So that makes me feel pretty good. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap us up today. I've rambled on enough. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. And if you did enjoy this content, please help me out. Hit that like and subscribe button and drop a comment below. I definitely love hearing from everybody. And of course, you know, you can always catch my new Minecraft episodes dropping Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if you want to see Voyager Season 2 that focuses on the interior, drop a comment below. I need to hear from everybody to know that that's something that you want to see. Also, I've got a poll going on right now for the Enterprise D Season 2. It's a cosmetic poll. You can either vote on the uh, All Good Things Enterprise scene in the finale of Star Trek The Next Generation or the Enterprise D as seen in Picard Season 3 when Geordi first reveals that he uh, rebuilt the ship. Uh, right now, the Enterprise D from Picard Season 3 is destroying the All Good Things Enterprise, but if you want to take part in that and jump into voting, 
Be sure to join the Discord, click on the Minecraft tab, and click on the Polls tab. If there's any new builds that you guys want to see me do, be sure to click on the Minecraft tab, and then click on Build Suggestions, where you can drop your build suggestions in that area, and people can upvote them. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for me. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. I hope everybody has a happy and safe week. And of course, what did you make in Minecraft today? Let me know in the comments section.